Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to Matthew tonight. Uh, Matthew is a uh, listener that contacted me from Michigan, and uh, he's got some really interesting things that have happened to him over the years. So how's it going tonight, Matthew? Good, good. Awesome. How are things out there in uh, Michigan right now? They're nice. It's still summertime. Oh, yeah. I, I feel it's a good time of year for Iowa as well. Uh, things are starting to get a little bit cooler. Not overly cool yet, but uh, it, it's a good time. I'm excited to talk to you. I've talked to a few gentlemen from uh, Michigan so far, and man, people wouldn't think it, but Michigan has got some wild things going on. So I'm, I'm interested to to hear your stories for sure. But uh, Matthew, before we get started, is there anything else the listeners would want to know about about uh, what it is you're into? Or uh... yeah, actually, um, really, I've just started twenty years ago this June, and then uh, it just escalated from there. And then ever since, I've been interested in researching it and just figuring out everything I can about these these guys. That's awesome. Is this for context for the listeners? Are we talking more about like the upper peninsula of Michigan or more, you know, the, the lower part? Um, actually both. Oh, it's wow. been, yeah, it's been the UP and then mid Michigan, the upper part of the lower and the thumb of Michigan. Well, all right, Matthew. I'd say I say we get into it. What do you think? Yeah, let's get started. There's right. a lot to go over. Go for it, <laughs> go for it man. <laughs> all right. So this all started t- 2003. I was out. I was out camping. I was moving apartments, and then I was moving apartments. I had a couple of weeks because my landlord. He was remodeling the apartment I was going to move into. So I'm like, all right, I'll move. I I dropped a bunch of stuff off at my parents. And then I kept all my basic stuff. So then I set camp up. And then I go to work all day and I come home. Well, I wouldn't come home. I come to the woods. And then and then I just I go fishing on the state lands. This is this started in the thumb of Michigan. And then, so, so after work, I'd pick up some water and then I just go sit by the river and then I'd wait till it started getting dark. And I go, well, I go swimming and stuff in the river. And then, and then I go back to, back to camping when it started getting dark and I go to sleep and then I get up in the morning. I, I, take my garbage out and then I go to work and then, and then I just go back to the woods every day after work. So then about, I'd say two weeks into this. Yeah. About two weeks I went fishing. I was relaxing. It was nice. It was so like every day after work, it was like a vacation. It was great. It was summertime. So then I get done fishing and swimming and stuff. And then I go back to my spot. I make, I make my dinner. I, I lay down. I'm going to bed. And then there is this, well, I keep track 
I guess I'll go back a little bit. I kept track of all the animals, all the animals in the area. I knew where the deer came through, when they came through, how many. I knew the turkeys when they came through. And then what time I knew, I thought I knew everything going on around me. So then where I was camping before dark, the deer would run across the road and come on the state land. So then, so then, well, I'm, I'm laying there, my tent about to go to sleep. And then the time the deer come through, there is just this loud, long drawn out scream. And then, yeah, that, that rattled me pretty good. But then I, uh, eventually I went to sleep. It took a couple hours. And then it was weird. I couldn't make sense of it. I didn't know, like, was this somebody else out in the woods or what the hell's going on? Or, but I was like, it didn't sound totally human. So, so then after that, what started happening is I go down to the river fishing after work and then there'd be, there'd be tree knocks and then I'd end up, one would come behind me and there was a steep bank and it was, it was, it was like a 25 foot bank and then it, it was flat and then it was all, it was all hardwood trees. So then as soon as I get down there fishing, there'd be a tree knot behind me about 15 feet off the hill. It was close. And then there would be, there would be another tree knock across the river. And at first they just did one knock. So I'm like, I'm like, well, there's something here. I can't do nothing. I mean, I'm literally surrounded. I can't see nothing. These guys, these guys would never let me see them. So then, so then this would happen. I just, I'd be scared, but I just keep fishing, doing my thing. So then after that, like, so every time I wrapped up, this would happen. This happens, this still happens today. So, so after the tree knots, I'd fish for like, yeah, I just finished fishing for like an hour or two. I do my thing. And then I go up and I check the trees. Every every time I check the trees, I'd, I'd wait till I thought they'd move off. And then I check the trees for marks because I'm like, how are they doing this? Like, like, are they running up on me, finding a stick and hitting the trees? And I could never find a mark on the trees. So I don't think these guys are using sticks on these tree knots. I think I heard, I heard one story, I think from your broadcast where the guy was saying he thinks their throats swell up and then they make that noise themselves. So I think, I think it's something like that because I checked these trees at least a dozen times and they were close. So I had to be, I had to be in the area. And then Three minutes. Let me see what I got. Oh, and then, so then after that, well, I ended up staying like three months. Three months, we were just, everything was fine. They just, they tree knock once in a while. Nothing major. I wouldn't hear nothing else. And then the one time, the one time I was real creeped out. I mean, these guys, they used, they used to make me terrified. And then that's a story all of its own. But then we'll get into that in a little bit. But then this one time I was in the tent, I was scared. I could hear them. I could hear them. They were making noises. I don't know what they were doing. I was scared, but I was like, I didn't feel threatened at all. And then the one time I was going to bed, I seen something rub against the tent and I seen fur. But I didn't know if it was a raccoon or not. It was low. But then I was in there. But I was still looking. And then right before dark, I seen a finger touch the tent. And then it touched it. It pushed it in a little bit. And then it slid to the side. So I think this was a, it was, it was a juvenile. And then, yeah, that was, I didn't sleep. I slept. 
I think like 20 minutes that night. And then, so then after all this, I just, I started listening to podcasts. I started, I started exploring all the areas. I, uh, yeah, I just engrossed myself in all the information I could find. Information back then was a lot harder to get than now. And then, so yeah, so then I ended up, I find tree structures, I I found deer. And then the deer, well, I sent you a picture, but what it what it doesn't show is every time I find the deer, there's three. There's always three deer carcasses in a pile. I think I think that they take them in an area and they're stacking them up and then they're moving on to another area a short time later and then they're just repeating the process. They do a, I think it's selective hunting basically. They won't use up all the resources in an area. They'll just use up partial and then they'll move on. They they basically keep nature balanced is what is what it seems like. Um, so then I got mad. These guys, these guys would not let me see them. I spent, I spent 10 years looking, 10 years where I could, I'd set camp up and then I know these guys would be around me. They'd make noise and stuff. I've been able, I took two people. Yeah. Two people with me that that they get scared. They get really scared. Like they'd be like, Oh my gosh, did you hear that? I'd be like, I'd be like, no, cause I'm so, I was to the point where I was used to it. Like they'd make noise. But then the one year it was, it had to be, geez, like three years later, I went down there fishing and then I heard, I heard the one tree knock behind me. And then I heard him banging. It was really fast. Like somebody was hitting a drum set. I'm like, man, what the heck? I'm like, what does this mean? This is crazy. So I started researching and researching. And I found out that when they knock fast, these, uh, somebody said that it's, it was where the family group was. You were close to the family group. So this was right across the river. So. I'm like, I'm like, I got excited. I'm like, I'm going to see something this time. So then, so then I get back there. It was like two days after this happened. I figured it out. Well, I thought, I thought I figured it out. So then I started, I knew, I knew this area so well. Like I spent months in there. Like, and then I was, so I was walking. This is where it gets kind of weird. So I was walking and then, and then I go through this little dense area and then I'm, I'm feeling weird. So then I hit, I keep going through this dark area and then, and then it opened up and, and it was, it was weird. It opened up, it was light. It was all, everything was flat and there were like seven foot tall cattails. They were They were all brown. You could tell it was all, it used to be all wet and then it was all dried up. And I'm like, this is where the hill is supposed to be. This is where the hill is supposed to be, where the turkeys come down every morning. Like, because that was their routine. I'm like, and then I got real sick feeling like I was like bent over. My mouth was getting all watery, like I was going to throw up. So, so I turned around and followed my footsteps and went back the exact way I came. I followed my footprints. I could see them. And then, yeah, I, I think I walked through a portal. And then I've been researching that. I think Scott Carpenter has got the, he's got photographs of these things. And I think what happened was, is the vegetation was thick. So I couldn't even tell it was there. and. And uh, this is what I think is happening to people that are disappearing. Like, well, this time I think they opened it. I think these guys can open these portals and just walk through them. I think that's what happened. 
I think the family group walked through a portal and I followed them right through it. And then they made me feel sick. So then I, I ended up turning around and walking back. But I think these things are opening up. I don't think it's just them. Like, I think these things can open up when conditions are right. So I think that's what, uh, that's what a lot of these disappearances are. I think people are walking through these that they might just be open a minute and then they walk through them and they close and they don't even realize what happens. So, so I realize the further you go down the rabbit hole, the deeper it gets. That is so then, very interesting, yeah. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> As you can guess, I, I'm probably going to ask you a few questions real quick. Um, so the thumb area of Michigan, you're saying, is yeah. is uh, yeah. is this by like maybe a certain like wildlife area or can you say like a certain town name or is it a region you're trying to keep a little bit, you know, vague for um, a reason or? I kind of want to keep the, the, the group of these guys kind of hidden. Sure. So I'd say in the, in the state along the black river up in the thumb. And I was, it's in St. Clair County on the state land. And I mean, the, the river just goes for miles like it's in there. And then I've witnessed, I've witnessed five people running, have encounters when I was there to witness it. So, I mean, I'm hoping people speak up because I know it's not just me. Absolutely. <laughs> so if listeners have encountered things in St. Clair County, Michigan, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had mentioned. Yeah. There were some weird noises, some strange noises. Can you go into any more detail about what these noises were like that, you know, people that were with you would hear and kind of they would get concerned or you would hear? Oh, yeah. Just what was it? There was a good one last year. The, uh, that it was, it was that one Sasquatch. I sent you the picture of his track. Mm hmm. That one I had my foot in, the big guy. He uh, he makes he makes this weird call now. He started he started two years ago, and so the, well, the story is I was out there searching. I'm searching. I'm like, these guys come through a certain time of the year. I want to see what they're eating, what they're doing, like where they're crossing through. Because these guys will, they'll eat the clams. They'll eat the clams and they're not like raccoons and stuff. They'll set these clams on the riverbank, but they'll stack them neatly, which is really weird. And then there'll be like two or three clams stacked neatly. And then there'll be a big impression in the water. So, so I know it was them and there won't be no raccoon tracks on a muddy bank. And then, uh, but anyways, I was searching and then I, I didn't bring an extra pair of shoes that time. So I went in barefoot in the river because there's like little islands and stuff. So I was cutting through to the islands and sometimes the water's higher. So you're, you're getting wet and then I'll cross the river and all different spots and whatnot. So then my feet are all muddy. I'm like, yeah, the clams are there. And then this thing starts, starts like, it's weird. It was, the, their calls are, they're all different. Each one has like their own voice like we do. And then this, this thing starts calling. It's like a bellow. It's, it's like, it's looking for a mate. It's, it's like, it's between a lion. It's, it's like when a lion roars for a mate. Are you hearing bellow? It sounds, it's like that, but it sounds like half human. And then it'll be long and drawn out for a little bit. And then it'll pause just like a lion. And then it'll stay quiet and then it'll do it again. So I'm walking across this grass and then walking across the grass so then I can put my feet in the water. I can get them clean and then I can get my shoes back on. 
Because, like, like, now I know they're in the area. And then he starts calling across the river while I'm washing my feet. And then these kayakers are floating by. And and the look on their face was amazing. Like, he tried sitting. I seen the guy. It was a guy and a girl. And the guy tried sitting up in his kayak. He used his hands to pick himself up. But he couldn't see nothing. And then he ended up just going around the bend. But he was... I could tell he was scared. Both of them were. Like, it was it was interesting. And then I didn't know what to do because these guys never made this noise. So I didn't know whether to say nothing or anything. So I didn't say nothing. Like, I I didn't call back to this this thing or nothing. So I just ended up leaving a short time after that. I'm like, all right, they've been in the area. They're right there. Like, because of the portal experience, I am not going where they're at. Like, like Sasquatch is scary enough, but I do not want to relive the portal, the portal thing, because that was crazy. And then, so then, so then I had that same bellowing again. So... So I finally, I had a buddy give me a kayak. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just going to go out and I'm going to explore. I'm going to see how much ground I cover, how long it takes, find a good campsite. I wasn't even squatching at all because I was trying to find new spots. So where I could camp and be comfortable, spots with firewood and flat areas to put my tent up. So then I just have the girlfriend just drop me off at the river. I'm like, you drop me off. I got my GPS. I'll call you to pick me up tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I got to check this out because I can cover all kinds of ground because the brush is so thick. You can't, you can't cover too much, too much on foot. Not like I've been wanting to cover. So then this was, and this was, when was this? This was two months ago. No, this was, yeah, this was two months ago. So then, cause I try and go at least once a month in the summer every year. So, I mean, I, I didn't realize how shallow this river was. So I, I bring my water shoes and then these rocks, these rocks are killing my feet. I friggin', I spent, like eight hours and half of it was walking on these rocks and these water shoes. My feet were destroyed. They were like, so it took, I did, I paddled like eight hours. So, so I'm going along the river and then I see a bridge. I'm like, all right, I'm going to cross a bridge. So I'm getting past this. It's going to be dark in about an hour. I'm going to pass this and then find the first spot I can to camp and I'm camping. So I'm going along. There's this, there's this family set up. They had to have three or four kids because there was like two kids playing in the water. So then I, I pat, I talked to him. Hi, how you doing? Yeah. I've been having a great time kayaking. And then, so I cross them and like my feet are so sore. I can hardly walk. Like I'm, I'm past the point of exhaustion. So then I find this little sandbar, but it's like humped. I'm like, all right, I can't camp here. So then I go a little further. So I end up going about three quarters to a mile from this bridge I crossed where I went under. I'm, I'm like, okay, thank God. There's a spot. There's a nice flat spot. It's got a steep hill. It's, it's like a, it's like a wall like I'm used to. And then it's got a box elder tree going sideways up over, up over this little area. I'm like, this is a cool little spot. So then, so then I get out of the kayak and then I pull the kayak up. I set it down and walk over and start looking around. And then I hear, I hear a stomp and then I hear a branch break across the river. I'm like, oh, great. 
I'm like, I, re- I know he's here. So then I'm like, well, I'm exhausted. I can't leave. So what I do then is uh, I'm like, I don't care. I'm setting camp up. I'm tired. I mean, I've been, so I've been dealing with these guys for 20 years. So I'm like, the, the fear has finally totally gone. I was like, I didn't even care. And then, so then I'm looking around this area. I'm grabbing the firewood and then I hear something, something come up. So they're like flanking me. So one comes up on the hill. If I'm facing the bank, I'm standing on the sand. I'm facing the hill that's beside me. There's one coming up to my right and there's one coming up to my left. And then the one to my left, there's a robin. There's a robin nest in a little tree right by where he's at. And this robin is losing his friggin' mind. It was crazy. I've heard I've heard robins go nuts because I grew up grew up around these things, but I've never heard a robin make these noises. <laughs> I don't know if he grabbed it or what. But then so then I'm like, I'm like, all right, guys. You've been doing this to me forever. So, so I just get, I just start getting camp set up. And then after about five or 10 minutes, I'm like, Hey, cause this Robin's still going crazy. I'm like, Hey, you, you gotta move. Like leave the Robin alone. This is ridiculous. So, so then like two, three minutes later, the Robin settles down. He's moved. I don't know if he moved around me or he just took off or, no idea but then like i got my camp set up and then so i went up on the hill i had to go up and get some more firewoods i didn't see nothing so then i uh i threw the firewood down the hill to the bank where i was camping so then i get a little fire i make some food i lay down and then and then uh like I just, I do my thing. I go to bed and then I hear this, this bellowing noise again, but it's like, it's like close to me. And it's, it's, I look at my watch, it's 1130 at night. This guy's bellowing not far, maybe 30, 40 yards. So I'm, I'm furious. Like I'm exhausted. Like I can't walk. I got, all my ultralight high-end camping gear like worth worth a lot of money like i ain't leaving so then he's bellowing i can't sleep so i heard him do it like five times and then i'm like i'm like hey and then he does it louder so then so then i start getting up and then he done it again. So I went, hey, even louder. And then and then he done it louder. And then right now I got one shoe on because I don't want to go out there barefoot because my shoes are my feet are gonna get sandy. And then I'm gonna have to clean clean them up again before I get in the tent. So I got one shoe on and then I'm like, he kept doing it. He got louder. And then by like the sixth time. He shot over straight across the river from me. And then he screamed at me so freaking loud. It was, it, it hurt my ear so bad. I couldn't move. I couldn't finish putting my other shoe on. So all I could do was sit there. It felt like my brain was rattling in my skull. So then he stopped and Right now, I'm just, I'm absolutely furious myself. So I screamed at him to shut that F up. I pop my shoe on. I jump out of the tent with my shoes, underwear, and a headlamp. And then I put my head down. I click the lamp on. I look up, and I don't see nothing. I'm like, all right, he he took off or it's hiding behind a tree or something. But I think he's too big to hide behind a tree. So then I'm looking behind me. And I don't see nothing because I knew the other ones were behind me last time. And then from that point on, it was it was silent all night. Like, like I just I got I was just trying to process what happened. So I went over. I 
I started getting the fire going again. I sat by it for a minute and then I just, I got it going a good fire. And then I went, I just went back to bed and had it out in the morning with no other issues. And I mean, he screams and I'm like, I'm like, there's a family sleeping in a tent, probably three quarters of a mile away. There's houses, there's houses all along the back half, all of the state land. Like, I'm like, these people are hearing this stuff. There's no way they're not. So Matthew, have then, you, yeah. have you ever um, been able to bring an audio recorder with you when you've gone out? Um, no, no audio recorders. I thought about it, but I mean, so far all my research has been like, I just, I want to get a better understanding. Mm. Like I'm, I'm doing it for myself. I'm not doing it to, to prove they exist or how many there are. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how these things can live in the wild and survive with just using their hands. Like it, it's ama- These things are amazing. And then, so after that incident, I went back, like, literally, I went back like a week later. I'm like, all right, let's see what happens this time. So I left out two apples and a fish. And then I I woke up. I woke up, the two apples were gone. And then they actually woke me up. They were arguing really loud. It was like the gibberish stuff and they were like yelling at each other so that was that was weird but they haven't been super vocal it's just been the last two years i don't understand why that is so (laughs) correlating with all this like like these guys wouldn't i couldn't see them i'm like i gotta see them i gotta see what these things are so so I went out, I got a, a dual sport motorcycle. I started buying all the, that's when I started buying all like all the ultralight camping gear. Like, cause it was like 10 years. I ain't been able to see these guys. So, so yeah, I'm back to that. And then, so I'm like, well, I'm going to go to different areas and see what happens. And then luckily I started listening to the reports to what people were saying. And they were saying up in Luzerne, Michigan at, at Folly Swamp. They were like, if you want to see Bigfoot go there, I heard like three reports. And then I heard like a hunter got chased out of there. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So then, yeah. So, so this was, this was bad because this scream happened last month a month or two ago and then so like i'm trying to go back to correlate the story but i there's just there's so many it's insane so the so i everybody's getting these reports i'm like all right and and this was really the best thing i ever done i start i was like i'm gonna believe these people and i'm gonna go out and check for myself like like I'm just, I mean, so what I did was I found recent reports and I found multiple and then I, so I went there and that, that was the, that was the game changer that, uh, so, so I get my motorcycle, I go up there to Luzerne. I mean, I'm going on the trails. I get there. It's starting to get late. I'm getting, I'm getting camp set up. Like I'm just getting there. I'm getting camp set up. I'm like, it was total silence. I'm like, I'm like, this is perfect. Cause I mean, this is what I, I'm looking for Bigfoot. So, I mean, this is exactly what I want. Cause that's an indicator. He's probably around. So what I did, well, as I was setting up camp, this deer runs up probably probably 40 yards from me it's pan 
So I just, I ain't moving. I'm like, it's panting. It's looking behind it. I'm like, all right, all right. He's something's chasing him. Like, and then it stopped. It wouldn't, it would stay out where I, I can't see it. I don't know what the heck's out there. I'm like, so I'm like, all right, I don't see nothing. It could be anything. So the deer takes off in this area to the behind me from the two, it was on a two track, out off a two track. It was behind me into the, into the woods. And then, so to the left is a swamp. So it ran over into the swamp and it was thick. It was just a real creepy, eerie, one of them places. So I ended up, I ran out of water and I knew, I knew the water was in the swamp, but when I was looking it up on the map, you couldn't tell it was this thick. So I'm like, well, I, I didn't have a choice. I had to go in there. I had to get water. So I had a water purifier, a water filter thing. So then I went, I went in there. It's bad. Like I'm almost losing my shoes. It's so bad. So I eventually get to this area where there's, it was just a big body of water. It was, it was beautiful in there after, after everything opened up and it was all water. It was, it was nice. So then I fill up this water container. I get plenty of water for two days. So then, so then I'm coming back and then I'm almost losing my shoes. And I look over and I see this trail, this trail coming out of this, this thick swampy area. And it's like, it's dirt. The rest, everything else is moss. There's spruce trees. I mean, I'm like, there could be something 12 feet for me in an orange jumpsuit. I wouldn't even know it was there. I mean, it didn't even matter what color it was or anything. So then, so then I see this little dirt trail and then I see the deer tracks. I'm like, oh, this is where the deer came through earlier and got out of here. It took this trail probably because it didn't want to sink and all this the boggy stuff. So then I'm like, all right, I'll follow these tracks. So I start following these tracks and then you can tell it's just trotting along. Nothing crazy. So then I, it goes to the opening where it crosses the two track, a little two track sand trail. And I'm looking down and there, there are stop marks everywhere from this deer. There must've been, I'd say 50 to 70 hoof prints in this one spot. And then there's these bushes. There's just two little bushes in front of me. And then the rest is all woods. So I'm like, I got all excited. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to go on the other side of these bushes. I'm going to find the tracks. I'm going to find out what happened to this friggin' deer. This is, this is going to be great. So, <laughs> so then I'm, I'm looking down, I'm about to walk over and then about 12 feet, 12 feet, I heard a stick break. And then like, this is, there's nothing. This is, it's just woods. It's just small. It was like 12, 12 inch diameter pines that were just poles. And there was no, you could see a long ways. So I hear this stick break and then I freeze. And then I look up and this thing is standing 12 feet from me in the open with, with nothing. There is nothing between us. This was, I was scared. I was, I was absolutely terrified. I was like, I'm well, I'm like, there's a good chance I can die right now. So if I'm going to die, I'm going to get a good look at this thing. So I'm standing there. He's got his arms to the side and his feet together and his head's down. I'm looking up. He's like eight feet at the top of the shoulders. And then I'm looking up and the sun's on him. And I got a squint because his it was fur. His fur was shiny. It looked exactly like a bear, a bear fur, but it you could tell it looked totally human. It was insane. So he so I'm looking and I'm squinting because the sun, his fur's kind of shiny. I mean, he looked totally manicured. He was gorgeous. 
well, I, I don't know if it was a he or a her, honestly. And then, so I'm looking at these back muscles and, and on the up by his, uh, what are his shoulder blades. And I mean, these back muscles are insane. Like, like they're literally looks like dimples through the fur. Like it, cause there's protrude, protruding out so far. And then, so I look down and then I see, I see his, his lower back muscles. And then those, it reminded me of a horse. It was just, it was real thick and it like rolled. It rolled into the spine. And then, and then I look down at the feet and then I look at the hands. I mean, it was, he was so close. I could see individual hairs. So, so he's got his hand on the side. He's a color. He, he's so he's like covered in bear fur. He's the color of an orangutan. He's, he's like reddish because I went to the zoo. I remember like two weeks after this. And then his hand, his hand was jet black. Everything, his feet, all that I could see. Everything was fur, but his feet and then his hands. But where the fur came down, where it looked like bear fur, it came down his arm. And then like the top of his hands before his knuckles, it was like real fuzzy. It was like real, it was like two inches. It was sticking out like two inches and it was real fuzzy and thick. Like this guy's made for cold weather, real cold weather. And then his feet, his feet were the same way. It was like fuzzy, but it was, and then his skin was jet black. And then under the fingernails, it was, it was, uh, it was just like a, it was just, it wasn't black, but it was like a, just a lighter color. And then, and then I was looking at his hand and then he picks his hand up slowly. Cause I think he's thinking, all right, I'm going to scare this guy out of here. He's going to run. He's, I think that's what they do to manipulate us. Some of these groups is they use, well, if they see us, they're just going to run away. So, so I'm like, no, no, I've been spending 10 years trying to see one of these things. So he, uh, he starts picking his hand up slowly to the side, like parallel to his shoulders, real slow. And he's letting his hand hang. So I'm looking at his fingers in his hand and then he raises it up to where his arms parallel. And then to, it was, well, it was level. And then he opened his hand and turned his palm to me. And then he turned his body to the right. And then he took, he swung his arm. And when he swung his arm, he took a big step. And what he was doing, he was he was walking around me to get back in the thick vegetation because I think they they killed that deer and there was a group of them feeding on it. So when he swung to where he was sideways with me, I started looking down like I I wasn't making eye contact with this guy. So so when he turned to the right, I put my I started putting my head down and I started looking to the left and then I just walked away and he just he took in one step he was from the left side of me to the right side of me and then he took one step and then and then he turned again and then he went back in and I just I turned and walked away it was it was terrifying so then I got back to camp I'm like it's almost dark because this is like a hundred yards from my tent. I'm like, it's almost dark. And like, I was on a motorcycle. And I'm like, well, well, I'll stay. I, did, I didn't sleep all night, all night. I got up at like three in the morning. I got cold. I didn't bring enough gear. It got cold up there that night. And then I got out of there about 10, 10 the next morning. I was waiting for it to get warm enough so I could get out of there. I was, I was scared. I was terrified the whole time until I left. And then, 
So what do we got? <laughs> do you mind if I so ask then, you, sorry, do you, Matthew, do you mind if I ask you a quick question about your sighting, which I think is incredible? Um, yeah, go ahead. Just, I want to make sure that I get it in. Um, do you remember how many fingers were on the hand? Oh, yeah, it was it was five fingers. Okay. It was like ours. It was just a larger scale. They were round. They were like thick, too. They were like, they were, I was, the hands were so big, though. I was like, this guy, he could have, he could have put his hand on top of his head and then his fingers would have wrapped around my head. He could have picked me up. I'm like, there, there was nothing I could have done. Yeah, it was five fingers, five, five toes. It was real clean. And then I, I've heard a lot of stories where the pads on the bottom are like lighter color. It wasn't like that. Everything was just black, mm. the skin wise. That's so, yeah, so it, interesting. You can you feel free to continue, but man, that is wild, Matthew. And then, so actually that's when the nightmare started. I had nightmares for about a year after that. So getting through that whole process was interesting. Sorry to hear that. I think, yeah, I think, I think, well, I mean, the point of me saying anything is pretty much to help other people that might be going through that same situation because I've, I've gotten through it. I mean, what it was, he just, he kept coming to me in a dream. It was a different one. It was a dark one, but it was over and over. He'd come up to me and I'd try fighting him and he'd, he'd attack or kill me or whatever. And I'd wake up all scared. And it was, it was bad, but eventually it all stopped when, uh, when he walked up to me, I, I put my head down and I said, teach me how you live. And then his eyes got big. He just turned and walked away. And to this day, I'll still have, I'll have dreams where I'll be going through the woods and then he'll just, he'll just be walking by like nothing's happened. It, it's amazing. I mean, you need to, you got to move past the fear. You got to deal with it. You got to accept it. So that, that's where I'm at with that. Um, let me see. So now my kids, I got two kids. So I'd like to, so I'm, I've been, I've been taking them out to this area since they were little. Cause the catfish, the catfishing used to be real good. So like when they were young, like I'd hook up a big catfish and then I'd give them those pole. And they'd be like, Oh dad, we can't, we can't pull it in. It's too bad. And, and to hold the back of their shirts. So, so like I introduced them to, they wouldn't make no sounds. They don't make sounds when I go out there when my kids are with me or with there's other males with me. They, they won't make any noises. So I try and get them used to that. And then about a month ago, like I'm teaching them how to, how to track animals and all that and what the tracks are. And then they finally got to see a print, a big footprint, which was awesome. They're like, they, they, they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe how big it is. I'm like, yeah. They're like, we should, I want to follow it. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. It the, takes time. The tracks that you found, how, what was the, the distance between the tra tracks? If you found a, a track that was part of a trackway. Um, they are all different. They are based on the size of the track and how they're moving. Cause some of them are running They're, I think they're chasing game or something. And then some of them, when they're walking, I don't know. I ain't found a lot of tracks where they've been together. Usually it's just one track, but I found all different sizes. I mean, I found like, I'd say four, four or five inch tracks 
I mean, along the side of the river. And I mean, this, this was years ago before I even accepted the fact that these things are out there. I'm like, who's bringing their kid out here barefoot walking through the brush on the side of the river? I mean, it was a perfect indentation. So that was spaced out. Um, what was it? That was like two feet. Those ones were like two feet. And then the real big ones, I don't know. Like I seen the one I stopped. Like I don't see a lot of tracks with these guys. Mm. That is very, very interesting. You mentioned that you, you're constantly, you know, researching uh, reports, looking at reports. Is there a certain place that you go to to find reports from the areas that you're researching in Michigan? Um, no, I just try and hit all of them. Oh, so do people, sorry, do people uh, send their reports directly to the, you or are you going to a place like BFRO or? No, I don't. I I don't use BFRO. I've heard a lot of stories of them altering the stories. Sure. So, yeah. So they kind of, I kind of, because they all fit the same little, because there's, there's a lot of things that happen out there. And like, they all can't fit in this little bubble. Right. And to clarify, I have, I've heard people say that same thing is, is what I should say, Matthew. So you're, you're finding reports at different places on the internet, um, et cetera, things oh, like yeah. that. Okay. Interesting. Like, like, uh, like Scott Carpenter. Sure. Yep. I started watching yeah. Steve on how to hunt when he first started. I watched his story. He told about his granddad, I think. Mm. I, I watched that first episode when he started all that. I remember. That was, yeah. yeah I have a question about a, some certain spots in Michigan, just to see if it's anything that you've heard of. Um, have you ever heard of any sightings near Glenny, Michigan? Glenny. I think that's um, North Michigan, but... I don't, I don't think so. Well, I actually, I'm probably sure I have, but I mean, these, they're all over the place. Like, like literally all over the place. And then these are the people that are talking about it. Mm. Like, I can't imagine, I can't imagine all the encounters where people aren't telling you. <laughs> but they're not, I think a lot of, a lot of people don't say anything. I want to loop back to when you were talking about portals uh, a while back. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious personally, cause I've heard a little bit, but I've never experienced. Um, how is it that you know that you are entering into a portal? Usually you cannot see it, correct? No, I couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I went through it. I knew I knew because the terrain, it was like I was on a different planet. It, it, not a different planet. It was like I was somewhere else. Like, it was all flat. And there was supposed to be a steep hill. So it was like, it was total confusion. It was like, this is not right. Like, there's supposed to be a hill here, and it's all flat and swampy, and there's cattails. And then I got real sick feeling. So I turned gotcha. and I followed my footprints and then, and then I felt fine. That's very interesting. Um, kind of a out of left field question, but I have a feeling you might have experienced something since you've been doing this for at least 20 years, you said, Michigan yeah. is not only known for Bigfoot, but it's also known for many dogman encounters as well. Have you ever encountered anything like that or heard anything uh, to do with dogman oh. or do you just stick with Bigfoot? I I stick with Bigfoot and then I've heard a lot of stories and none of the stories are good. So I'm trusting what everybody's saying. So if I see a track, I'm out of there. I haven't seen no tracks like, so I, 
where I go, I, I stick with Bigfoot reports. To what I want to do, I want to keep exploring though. So I want to learn where these dog, dog men reports are. So I know not to go there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel the same way with that topic. I'm like, I just cross my fingers that the reports don't come into Iowa. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard either you're afraid or they make you afraid. Mm. Like I, I've heard no happy stories with that. Absolutely. Getting back to your visual sighting you had, did you get a, a feeling of, or maybe from what you, let's say rather your visual, um, more that the creature was, a human type creature or an ape type creature, or maybe something completely not the two. I think, I think these things are completely not the two. I think they're their own. I think cause I've seen other ones too in different areas and they're all totally different. They're different color. They're different sizes. They act different. Their voices are different. They, they hunt different. Like, I think there's this big, broad spectrum that, that we're not being told. I think these things have been around for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. And there's just, there's so many different species that have evolved. Like, I, we, I think there's things we don't even know. I think there's ones that are smart enough to where we don't even know they exist. Because, yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at with that. Like, and and evidence-wise, I think there's there's plenty of evidence. Like the Patterson-Gimlin film. Like, why, how are we going to get a better video? That's, that's an amazing video. I agree. Like, you can see... You can see the muscle flexing. It it all should have ended right there. But I think because of their abilities, we're not we're not being told what they are, and there's such a variety of them, and they if they're just they can't control them. They, these things can cloak. They, I've had them cloak on me. I've had them do all kinds of crazy stuff like I've had them cloak and I've been so close I could still smell them it was it had like a wild gamey smell and I think with the I never experienced the skunk smell but I heard a report years ago where they did a biopsy on one and they said it had scent glands under its armpits and inside inside its legs and the in the thighs it had like the same glance is like a skunk does. So these things, I, they don't, I don't think they naturally stink. They take good care of themselves, but I think we got like the Sasquatch and then we got like the furry ones. And then we got the long hair, like Neanderthal ones and they might stink. There's what I found is the more you learn the the more there is to learn. Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I agree with that a hundred percent. It seems you, you, I personally put out an episode about a certain location and five people contact me the next day saying, Hey, that happened to me 20 years ago, or it just happened to me. It's, it's wild. The more you do, the more you look into it, the more there is to look into. I totally agree with that. And then when I go, I don't, one thing I know they don't like, like I want to hit on, hit on people that want to search people that got their own questions that might want to see something too. Cause it's hard. It's like 10, 20 years ago, it was hard to find any information. Like you, you didn't want to tell anybody because people would just blow you off. So what I do when I go too is I don't, I just take bear spray. I don't take a, uh, I mean, I'll take my phone and GPS, but I'll use it as little as possible. I know they hate phones. I don't know what it is about them, 
they they hate them and then i they don't like guns which is is obvious because i'm sure they've had generations of issues ever since we've had guns so i don't yeah i just use bear spray take my knife i don't take a firearm and i try not i got chased out of the woods one time because i was just exploring and i was camping and i was i was i had phone service so i was watching youtube videos and then i heard branches breaking and it started getting closer and closer i'm like yeah that was the one time i i got out of there so they were they were literally they're chasing you out of the woods is what you're yeah like he wasn't chasing me they were he was coming up slowly right like i i seen this guy too and i he was one of them once it was just gigantic it was it was insane when i seen him but i seen him i seen him i was with my girlfriend i couldn't even say nothing i just looked at him and he had a young one in front of him he had his hand on it and then they were just watching me. I was watching them. We were on a little hike. And then uh, I just had a drink of water and then we walked off. But I mean, this guy was so big. It, it was just terrifying. Like, he he could have picked up my car and hit me with it. Like, like he was he was one of them. And then I thought that might have been him coming through the woods slowly at me. So I'm like, I ain't taking no chances. I'm out of here. But that's that's another story. Absolutely um, fantastic. We haven't even talked about the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I think, right? This has all been stuff in the lower part, I believe. Yeah, all wow. over. Like... What I do is I find is I find the most secluded areas with the water source and then I go the hottest time of the year. So I'm like, if you're 800 pounds, a thousand pounds, you're fur covered, you're staying close to a water source. Oh, wow. Yeah. That seems to work. And then, and you they know, don't have buckets. they'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have buckets to haul this water around. Like, so rivers bodies of water you got a good chance yeah and then and then it's crazy all these guys they're starting to pass like john Bennernagel, scott carp scott carpenter was good mm. that was he was a great guy yeah that's a pretty recent one uh yeah his, his passing which is unfortunate you know Hmm. yeah so you how much time are we at you got time for me to start the upper peninsula oh I, so I'll, I'll tell you this matthew i've got all the time in the world <laughs> i more, I more <laughs> want to be respectful of your time so if you'd like to right. if you have things to share about the upper peninsula peninsula of michigan uh by all means yeah go ahead yeah, this was this this was it was different than the other stories. I gotta what time is it? Oh my I gotta be up at what time? At four thirty. I'm I'm on seven days Oof. right now at work, but it's all right. I ain't been sleeping good anyway. I've been reliving everything, knowing I'm gonna talk about it. Like trying to piece it all together. So uh all right, I'll finish it up with this last one. Fair enough. So, so my ex girlfriend, her her dad, and then their uncles and stuff, they all were bear hunters. So they went up to Newberry, bear hunting on state land, different sections. They had state land and private property. They had a buddy, they had a little cottage that we stayed at. Well, it was a little cabin and it had four bunks. It, it was perfect. It's just a nice little up north place. So then they would go set bait piles and stuff like a week or two before. So then uh, anyways, I went up there. I was I was like, oh, bears, they 
probably can't be that bad. So I'm like, well, I'll take, I'll go with the bow. So I, I took a bow. I wore a, a ghillie suit and then I'd have them, I just have them drop me off. I'm like, just drop me off, come back in a couple hours. And then, and then, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So then they drop me off and then I'm just, I don't know what it is. I'm like, I'm feeling terrified. I don't know what's going on. I don't see nothing. I, it's, it's crazy. So then I still sit there and wait. And this was, this was friggin', this was probably 18 years ago. Yeah, 18 years ago. So then we, we go up there and then I'm hunting. I'm feeling freaked out real bad. I don't know what it is. I'm just terrified. And it's, it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with the bears. I'm like, this is weird. Cause like, I'm still learning about these guys. It's hard to even comprehend they exist at first. Like you don't want to believe it. The stuff that happens. Well, I didn't, I wanted to blow it off and be like, forget about it, but it didn't work out that way. And then, uh, so I'm real scared and nothing happens the first day. And then the second day I'm, I'm sitting out there, I'm scared again. And then I hear this tree get knocked over. I'm like, all right, all right, the bear's trying to scare me out of here. <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe he'll come in, I'll see him. But then after this tree gets knocked over, I can hear the tree getting ripped apart. It was it was insane. It was it was terrifying. It was I it's one of the scariest, scaredest I've ever been. So then so then after that we go back I tell him I'm like yeah I heard a tree knocked over so then so then I go again the next day and people are allowed to to bear hunt with dogs so they got the GPS collars on them and so then well they're dropping me off so other hunters don't even know I'm out there so I hear this dog howling. I'm like, oh, he's a long ways away. Like, I could barely hear him. And then he gets closer and closer, and he's howling and going crazy. You can tell he's on something. He was a, a beagle. And then he got closer. He got probably got 40 yards from me, and then he just stopped. I couldn't hear nothing. I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's weird. And then, and then, like, Probably 15, 20 minutes later, I, I heard the hunter coming out to get his dog, and I heard him swearing and cussing. I I don't know what happened, but I'm sure his dog, something bad happened, something real bad. So then, so then, when was it? A while after that, like, because that day I stayed, the, I stayed the whole day. I'm like, just drop me off early. I want to see what's going on. So then probably four hours later, a big bear sticks his head through through this brush and is looking. He, he didn't even see me. He was looking off to the side, and then he was just gone. He was, I never seen any animal in my life to this day move that fast. So I freaked this guy out, freaked this bear out. So I'm like, oh, that's crazy. I'm like, he was big. I was like, I, I probably wouldn't even have took a shot on him. Like, I was just, I don't know. I didn't think I'd have to hit him perfect with an arrow. So then I'm like, all right. Well, that was the last day. And I'm totally freaked out because this stuff happens. So I'm like, I forgot my knife. And we were heading back. And it was on the way back. And I'm like, I, I want my knife. So I'm like, Hey, Hey, my knife's out there. We need to go back. And there's been stuff happening. Can you come out with the gun and just like walk behind me? Cause in case anything happens and they're like, yeah, all right. So they stop. He's loading the gun. I'm like, I'm like, well, 
well, you got one in the chamber? He's like, yeah. And then, because at this point, I'm so scared. I'm convinced. I'm convinced I'm going to die at this point. I'm like, if I go back in these woods, I'm going to die. So, so he said, yeah, I got one in the chamber. And then I'm like, I'm like, well, do you got your safety on? He's like, he just gave me a funny look. And then he looked at his dad, like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> so, so then, so then I don't know if he turned it off or not. So we start walking back in there. And then I'm just, I'm terrified this time. And then something, something was to my left. I, I could, I just knew there was something there. And then you could hear movement. And it, so, it took off. It ran. It was like, I couldn't see anything. It was, it, this thing was totally invisible. And it, it literally, it ran by me. And the only way I knew something was there, like eight, eight to 10 feet in the air, the tree limbs are getting, you can see they're getting pushed out of the way. Whatever's going by is making its own path through the woods. And then and then it was gone. It was, it happened fast. It was, this was like seconds. I think it was gone in like two, three seconds. It was just crazy fast. And then you could see it was crazy. I can still like, it just happened an hour ago. I can see them limbs moving and flailing. And then I look back at, uh, at my girlfriend's dad and he's just standing there with his mouth wide open. He's not moving. He's, he's terrified. I'm like, I'm like, are you all right? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm like, did you see it? He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, I'm not going no further. I'm like, my neck, well, because, and my knife, like, right where this thing was running. So I'm like, all right, you will wait here. I've been freaked out the whole time. I'm still freaked out, but I'm getting my knife. So then I walk over and get my knife. And then he, and then he stays with inside of me, which was nice. And then we get out of there. And then he was, he was all shook up after that. Like we never, we never talked about it at all. It was, it was just one of them things. He was, I know I ended up staying there at his house. Like I think like a, a few days or something. He didn't sleep for two days after that encounter. I know he didn't sleep at least two days. He was, he was shook up bad, but yeah. Yeah. That was that story. That is incredibly intense. When you're looking at like the top, the, the tree limbs like eight feet up you can see him moving back and forth yeah, did you see you like a disturbance in the the air around it or it was just like something you invisible? could see it was being pushed wow it it would you could tell it was being pushed out of the way and there was this like clearing it was making as it was going through Man. it was because like the trees were kind of tall but uh, so the lower part was open, but up eight feet and stuff, there was there was tree limbs and stuff. So it was you could see it was smacking them out of the way. It's like they were vibrating some of them. It was it was scary. That's incredible. Wow. It's not surprising that. You know, you, you are having issues sleeping sometimes and i i do want to uh thank you for for being able to share all this i know that it it's it sounds like it's been hard putting your mind back in in those times um as you said but um i know it's very helpful to at least some of the listeners that are probably experiencing things that are similar to hear someone talk about yeah because because they're researching this stuff, trying to figure it out and they're listening to your podcast. And some people are, are trying to come to grips with, with what they experienced themselves. And just to know that someone else experienced it, uh, I know is helping them get through it. So, um, just thank you for, for approaching me about this. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I mean, 
it, it's hard to find people to listen to this kind of stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's different. <laughs> Do you have any uh, final advice for, let's say, uh, people that might want to, to, to go out and look for Bigfoot themselves on the weekend? Um, yeah, the biggest thing I've learned, I don't go to where there's missing people. Like, like the UP. That's why I only had one experience. I, I'm not going back up there and looking again. Hmm. Cause you, you never know what's going on. So I'm here and research and, uh, the area you're, you're thinking about going to. And if there's missing 411 things, probably don't mess with it. Yeah. Like, like the Appalachian mountains. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan, there's been people, the Bigfooters, that have disappeared. Oh, wow. People I going out looking for them. They don't know what happened. It's intense. And so uh, I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you go to places, I'm like, well, if there's no disappearances, like at least you're going to make it out of there. There's a good <laughs> I, chance. <laughs> That's true. I'll always be prepared. It sounds like you're you're a guy who is definitely more than prepared when you go out as well, from what you were saying earlier. Yeah, honestly, I just it just it never ends. I just want to go back out again. Like I mean, it's just the world's more interesting than what we know. I mean, there's there's more out there. Absolutely. Matthew Thank you again for, for reaching out and for chatting tonight. Um, if, if listeners have had any things happen in these areas of Michigan that Matthew was talking about, or if you've had anything happen in completely unrelated areas of Michigan, feel free to reach out. You can always email me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com. I'd love to start a back and forth with you about it. But uh, thank you so yeah, much for chatting. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And keep me in the know. It sounds like you're out there quite a bit. If you ever have anything else interesting happen, feel free to reach <laughs> out, Matthew. <laughs> All right. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. You got it. Have a great night, sir. Yep. Bye. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all it's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because i know you haven't been sleeping i understand what you're going through and i appreciate every one of you listening did you make it through the credits and you're looking for something else to watch with bigfoot society of course you are that's why you want to check out there there Thar. It's been a night. But check out this great episode to do with a retired law enforcement officer that had a wild encounter in Glenny, Michigan that will blow your mind. If you haven't heard this one yet, it's amazing. So check it out right there. And we'll see you next time.